Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you be. This is Apostle Benny from Disciples of Yeshua Deliverance Ministry, and we're here again to deliver a word from our Father. We're going to continue on our message, the faith of our Father. Yahweh is levels above ours. And this is part five. Part five. Uh, I would hope that if anyone is uh, watching on Facebook out there that you would, and you know me, text me and let me know if the audio levels are exactly where they're supposed to be and if you can see us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for everyone that's on the line who is watching us right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask that you bless them, Father God, and you bring, you bring prosperity to their door. Father God, and you bring a chance, a chance, Father God, for them to come into the kingdom, Lord, so that they understand what prosperity is. And for that, we thank you, Lord, and we give you praise in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. Well, the reason that is, is God's, God is levels above us. He says that his ways are above our ways, above our ways. He didn't give us a choice whether his way, he said they're different, but he didn't say whether, uh, he didn't give us a choice to say, well, maybe they're lower. No, he said, mine are so far above yours. And so that's what we need to understand. Our, our father is a progressive God. Our father is a God who lifts you up. Our father is a God, a God of increase. Our father is a God of prosperity. Our father is a God of health and healing. Our father is is a, is, a, is a God of, of signs and wonders. We need to understand when, 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 he, when Jesus told the disciples uh, how to pray, he said, our Father who art in heaven, first of all, hallowed be his name. Holy is his name. Holy is his name. And we thank you, Lord, that you've made us holy. He's made us holy. I want you all to understand that. It's only because of him that we're perfected. And it's only in him that we're perfected or holy. So we're going to start. Hey, look, we went over his thoughts and his ways are not our ways. Uh, we talked about in, in Zio, uh, Isaiah chapter 53 where it speaks of it pleased the Lord to bruise Jesus. Yeah. Then you need to know it pleases him to chastise you so that he may get the best out of you because he know he put the best in you. See, that's, that's what we need to understand. He also told, Jesus told uh, uh, Peter that the devil is coming to have an episode with you and his motive, Peter, is to sift you as wheat. To sift you. And, and if you know the uh, uh, um, Elder Marquise on Bi uh, Bible study this week so eloquently uh, uh, um, um, uh, uh, expressed and explained the process of wheat being uh, uh, gathered and wheat being processed on the threshing floor and how it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a violent thing if you look at it. So God was allowing Peter to know what you're getting ready to go through is going to be a little violent. Even if it's not physically violent, it's going to be spiritually violent. You're going to have to fight for your life. You're going to have to use faith. And know this, Peter, I have prayed that your faith will not fail you. And then when you come back, because I know it's going to strengthen you, I want you to strengthen your brethren. Yeah. Amen? So this is, this is this, I'm just going over a little, giving you a little uh, a synopsis of what it is that we've, uh, studying how we got here. So First Peter, uh, um, First Peter, uh, one, chapter one was the first thing that we went over in part one. Part two was thoughts and ways, not our ways. Part three, uh, it pleased him to bruise him. Part four, uh, the sifting as we and, 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 and have you considered <laughs> Job 
the Job experience, which we uh, may or may not be uh, um, um, familiar with, but that's in the book of Job, chapter 1. And you can see how it started. That whole, the whole book of Job is, is very powerful. And watching the man who God says is complete and holy in his, in his uh, time on earth and watch how God dealt with him. Okay, so today we go to Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We go to the fiery furnace. We take a peek at that, and we may also get to Daniel in the lion's den. Now, I hope that you guys see a, a theme to, 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 and, and a direction in which we're, we're ministering. We're showing how God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts because we would say, why would God let the three Hebrew boys go in the fire? We would say, why would God let Daniel get thrown into the lion's den? We would say, why would God allow the devil to sift Peter? We say, why, why, God, why would you turn, turn the devil and point to, to one of your most faithful and say, have you considered him? Uh, uh, we, 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 why, why, God, why? This is why we're here. Because God said, my ways again are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Because some of us believe that we can outthink God. Some of us believe that we can outmaneuver God. Some, some of us believe that we've created God in our image. And for, for those people, I say, the truth is God created you in his image if you've accepted Jesus Christ. And a lot of men don't like to hear that because they believe everybody's been uh, created in God's image. Well, everyone who was in Adam got created in God's image. Therefore, everyone who was in Adam fell. The only way you get out of that, that fallen state is to come back into Jesus. So they're making it to let us, God, then now Jesus. Let us and the Holy Spirit. Let us create man. And that's what God is doing to us right now. So to be perfect and to be perfect, to be holy, and to be in the image of God, you have to come in to Christ. He's the only door. He's the only way in. So we're going we're gonna to start with uh, Daniel. Let me get there. We're going to Daniel, and we're going to start in chapter 3, I do believe. We're going to take a peek over here. Daniel, chapter 3. Now, at this time, Nebuchadnezzar was the king. Um, God and Nebuchadnezzar had had some dealings. Now, Nebuchadnezzar was one of those prideful kings who believed that he knew better than God, that there is no other God but his God. Um, the kings back in those days, if you came to them talking about a, a God, they took it as a threat because it's a threat to their authority because the king was like, there's no one above me. And the, or, or the king would make his own God and then say, everybody got to worship him. And that God did nothing for them. So when the prophets came on the scene, and I, let me tell you, that, that's, that's something that's out of order today. You know, back in the day, the kings, the, the um, I would say presidents, the, the prime minister, the people who ever run the countries or these territory, territories had counsel with the prophets. And those who listened prospered. Those who didn't felt the wrath. But they had counsel with the prophets. The reason Jezebel wanted to kill the prophets where the prophets brought the word of God and told them the direction of the nation. And she, uh, being the queen, and having her husband Ahab at the time, uh, decided we know better than God. So that's why Elijah had a showdown. He had a showdown with the prophets of Baal and the prophets of God. And the prophets of God was Elijah. Baal had many prophets and God had one. And so Elijah felt alone. But the thing is, Elijah knew only about himself because Elijah was a selfish person anyway. Elijah was one who was concerned about himself. Even though God used him in a powerful way. 
a powerful way. Uh, some of us get used in a powerful way, but we're selfish. We got issues still. That's called being a human with an anointing. I got, I have my issues. I know I'm anointed, but I know I have my issues. But that's all. God, hey, God say I chose you anyway, with your issues. So, my thing is not to allow my issues to be larger than God. God is the largest thing in the life. So, 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 so we we we, we saw uh, God wipe out um, um, Jezebel, Ahab, and her prophets, and glorify Elijah. And then we saw Elijah get attacked in his mind by the devil and operated in fear. Maybe we'll look into that one day. Maybe we'll get into that lesson. But today we're going to look at the three Hebrew boys. We're going to start verse chapter 3. Let me see exactly where I want to start here. Let's start with verse 13. It says, Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods, little g and the s, my gods, or worship? And I'm in a new King James, new King James uh, version for those who are wondering. That you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up. <laughs> now, if you are ready, at the time you hear the sound of the, I'm not going through all these instruments, but this is, let's just say the sound of the band. If you, when you hear the sound of the band, uh, with all kinds of music, you need to fall down. If you don't fall down and worship the image which I have made, Good, he says. Good, he says. But if you do not worship, he says, excuse me, he said, if you do fall down and worship, it's good for you. If you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning fire, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? So what's happening here, Nebuchadnezzar is thrown down the gauntlet. Nebuchadnezzar has heard from the devil when the devil came to accuse the brethren that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, when, they, when the music was played previously, they did not worship the God, the God of Nebuchadnezzar, which he made, the golden image, which he made. I ho I'm hoping some of y'all are hearing this about today and what's going on right now. What's going on right now, all right? Uh, Let's see where I stopped them. Okay, I think it was verse 15. All right, verse 15, it says, uh, let me see, he says, I'm going to pick up where it says, I have made good. Ex explanation point. But, see, but if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? He's calling out God. He's calling out God. I'm going to create a situation. The devil does this to us. He creates situations to see if God is going to deliver us. You need to know that. No, it's not about you. It's about the spiritual warfare that's going on. Shadrach, verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king. they talking to the king now. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you <laughs> in this matter. If that, if that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will, let's see, first they said he's able to do this. Now they say he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Now they say he's able to deliver, deliver us from that fire. From the situation, but we do know this: He will deliver us from the power that you think you wielding 
on us. He will deliver us from the mindset you're trying to put on us. He will deliver us from those. It's no might able. No, he will. He will because what, what, what they're saying is we stand right here for him. Now, you might put us in a situation uh, that we don't know what God's plan is with the situation, but we do know what God's plan is according to us in our heart, and we will be delivered from your nonsense. We're not going to bow down to it. It's a lot of nonsense being presented to us right now by this world, by the world system, and they want us to acquiesce or bow down to this nonsense. You need to stand for what you believe. Now, they're going to put you in some situations. I'm going to tell you that now. They're going to put you in some situations. The devil's already devised his schemes. But you need, if, if you don't know that his devised schemes won't work, if you don't understand that no weapon, woo, did you hear me? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. If you don't understand that, then you might get a little shaken by the schemes of the devil. But God is able and God has made it so that we may escape every dart that the devil throw. Every scheme that the devil has uh, uh, devised for us can bring forth power, strength, and healing for us if we would trust God. So they knew that. They're like, hey, 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 even if we get burned up, we're not bowing down to you. We're not bowing down to you. They said, but if not, verse 18, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods. They're telling them straight out, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Now Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, now he hot, he burning up, and the expression on his face changed. The, the boy's countenance changed. His, uh, uh, changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was uh, usually heated. See, this is what I'm, I'm going to tell you something about you, God. Let me tell you something. See, 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 right here, right here, like, like, like Elijah, when he was uh, uh, going against Baal's prophets, they had, both of them had an altar to see which, which one, uh, with, with the fire from heaven come down the light. Well, they called on their God continuously never happened. What Elijah did, just like what God allowed to happen right here. And see, God does that. This is how God said uh, about um, uh, Pharaoh. When, he, when you read, it says, and God, and God uh, turned his heart or God hardened his heart. No, God's like, from the action that I did, from the words that I spoke, that's what's hardened his heart. This is what's happening right here. See, this boy, Nebuchadnezzar's heart got hard, and so he wanted to do one of these numbers. Let, let, well, let me crank it up sometimes, but God wanted him to do that. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Just like with, with Elijah, Elijah took water and poured on, all, all over the altar, all over the sacrifice, all over the wood. He did it like three, four times because he wanted to make sure it was nice and soaking wet so that if it should catch on fire, you know, I had nothing to do with it. It wasn't because of a spark from the sun. It was God that did that. Yeah. So he turned it up seven times harder than what you, you was usual. And understand as a Christian, this is what we do. We go through the mess and for others, it's not so bad, but for us, it's, it's terrible. It's horrible. But God brings us through so that other people can see God is real. It's for his glory. Yes. Now, we get delivered, but he gets the glory. Yes. You understand? Yes. And see, so for his glory, God, God, in other words, he hardened this man's heart, and he cranked it up seven times. There's no way that they could survive. And then watch this. Watch what God did just because God not finished yet. He's like, I want to make sure you understand this the situation for my servants. Okay? Verse 20 says, And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, bind Meshach, bind Abednego, and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Verse 21. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. How many people know that if they're going to throw you in the fire like that, and they bind you all up, and they bind you with your clothes on and everything, that that's just cruelty? Yeah. They just being cruel now. 
They're not even going to take your clothes off. They can put the clothes in there. They want to make sure you burn. Yes, they do. All right, while you're dressed. Verse 22 says, therefore, because the king's command was urgent, because he, he, he wanted it right now, and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. See, God won't finish. God said this fire is so hot that even if you get close to it, it will kill you. If a mere man was to approach this furnace right now, he's going to die. Understand, we're not mere men. Stop saying I'm only human. Because the anointing. <laughs> I felt it. Because the anointing. Because of the anointing, I don't care how bad the situation is, because of the anointing. God has you and you have the advantage. You need to understand that you have the advantage. Yes, because of what? The anointing. The anointing that's on your life. Amen? Amen. So look, they got burned, the mere men, the, the ones who, who, who were the henchmen for the devil, got burned up. Yes, got burned up. And if you just came in, if you just joined us, we're in Daniel chapter 3, verse 23. All right, and, 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 and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they in the fire now. Yes, they are. And these, the, the, look, and the, these three men, verse 23, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Now, wouldn't you think that uh, if God is all-powerful, if God is all that God says he is, if he's omniscient, and he's um, omnipotent, and he's uh, 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 the, the, the one true God that he would deliver them, then they wouldn't even have to go in the fire. See, because that's how you think. His ways are not our way. His thoughts are not our thoughts. God wants us to go through so he can get the glory. You just have to have enough belief and faith in him to go through, knowing that he's going to get the glory. Go in the fire. Get in the lines then. Do whatever you got to do. Deal with the situation. And, and, and the way you deal with the situation is by trusting in God. You deal with it by faith. You don't allow the situation to burn you up. See, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego spoke faith. They spoke faith-filled words when faced with this impossible situation. Our God is the God of the impossible. Now, they, they in the fire. They bound. The people who... who who tried to hench them have already received their uh, wrath. They burned up. They died. But the one who gave the orders, the one who, who walks with the devil, he's still alive and he's witnessing this. All right? Okay. Verse 24 said, The king, Nebuchadnezzar, was astonished. Why? What, what are you astonished for, bro? And he rose in haste. I mean, he jumped up. And he spoke, saying to, to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound in the, into the midst of the fire? And they answered, oh. And said, oh, old king, yes, true, true, old king. Look, he answered, I see four men loosed, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Now, he got a revelation. So how how he know what the Son of God looked like? He got a revelation. He got a revelation. Not they're not bound anymore. That's what we need to understand. God has freed us. I don't care what situation you're in. You're not bound anymore. You've been delivered from the mindset of the King in the Kingdom. You have been given the mind of Christ. You're not bound anymore, even though you may still be in the situation. The fire right there. But God is in it with him. Is God walking with you through your situation? Are, are you speaking faith and believing in him? And Hey, you don't have to fight back. This fight is God's fight. Stand by and, 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 and see the salvation of the Lord. 
instead of you trying to rack your brain and figure out how I'm going to work this out. Receive it by faith and know it's worked out. Ultimately, God's going to get the glory out of my life. Know that. No matter what the situation is, I'm not going to waver. Don't become double-minded because the heat high. You have to continue to speak to faith. Now, verse 26 says, Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the who? Most high God. You see what I'm saying? Now, if they never went to fire, that word, those words never would have came out of Sarah, I mean, out of uh, Nebuchadnezzar's mouth. So sometimes you going through and allowing them to witness will win them to Christ. That's why you, you can't start talking like them because they're going to come talk to you with that natural mindset. You got to keep talking like Christ. You got to keep talking with, with faith. You have to continue to believe in what God has said and not the situation of what you see, regardless of what you're experiencing. So you got to let God in there. You got to allow him to come in and, 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 and let him be in a fire with you. Don't, 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 don't squirm and, 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 and keep staring at the flames and start talking about how hot they look. And all. Don't talk to fire. Speak faith. Amen? He says, so... He told him, uh, a servant of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Sarek, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. Now, what happened to the fourth man? You know why he ain't come? Even if he called him, he wouldn't have came because he don't, he don't bow down to him. You don't tell him what to do. You, you called him out talking about who's going to save you if I just throw you in the fire. Well, he showed him, showed him. I am. Who was the name? I am. <laughs> And and the 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 satraps, uh, these are these are people who high up uh, uh, counselors like okay the satraps uh, or satraps I don't know exactly how to pronounce it but the, the administrators the governors and the kings counselors gathered together and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had what no power. Mm. Yeah, but see, but they was in the midst of the fire. If they didn't go into the midst of the fire, they never could see that the fire had no power over these men. See, we got to understand God's ways is not our ways. But God's motive of love and, for, and God showing the people who he is, that's God. Hey, it never changes. This is what God is about. So... They all came out and they said they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. And it hit the hair <laughs> of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected. And the, not even the smell, the smell of fire was not on them. Now, what this is telling you right here that even though you go through it, people won't even be able to tell unless you tell them. If they didn't witness it, and they didn't see your deliverance, they won't even be able to tell that you got thrown in the fire. You'd have to tell them. You got to see, uh, we overcome the world by the word of our testimony and the blood, the blood, the, the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, right? And see, but you have to don't love your life unto death. You got you, you to gotta let your life go. See, they, they were willing to die and to go in and get thrown into the fire, not really concerned about their lives. That's why they didn't bow down in the beginning. Before they even saw the fiery furnace, they was prepared because they wouldn't bow down when they played the music. See, some people bow down when they play the music, then they think they're going to call on God when they get to the fiery furnace. But you have been practicing calling on God because when, they start, when they, you saw the weapon being formed, you start talking about the weapon and what it's going to do to you. So, see, our mindset has to be the mind of Christ where we understand what the word of God said that uh, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You have to believe that. When God said, I will never leave you and forsake you, you got to believe that. You have to believe. It's, it's, it's about what you believe. You have, and then not only do you have to believe, believe is not enough. You got to confess it. See, they said it to the king. God will always present a, a, a situation for you to be able to say it. They said it to the old king. <laughs> We ain't got to answer you in this situation, but we will. And they did. Amen? Uh, uh, 
I believe we're in verse 27. We went through 27. And let's go to 28. It says, Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He's changed his whole tune. Who, listen to this, bless the God. I'm, I'm, I'm going to skip over their name. Blessed be the God of them who sent his angel mm. and delivered his servants who trusted in him. See, this, this thing, I, I don't know if you can understand the, the uh, depth of the change that happened to Nebuchadnezzar in this situation because he saw it. He know how, how when his, his heart was full of the, the, the devil by cranking the fire up sometimes. And now he's experienced some type of deliverance himself by witnessing somebody else go through that now he understands who God is that he don't even serve. He saw him. He recognized him. He understands. He is the one who saved him. No one could survive that. My own man got burned up. Y'all understand the magnitude of the change that happened to him by witnessing this situation that God had men on earth who were willing to operate in faith and allow the world to, 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 to come against them, but they stood for him, and then you, you see what happened afterwards. Now, to them, they're not like, oh, wow, God saved us. No! They're like, we knew he would. We knew he would. We, we ain't worried about that. He's able. But we knew that we weren't going to bow down to your God. So now you want to bow down to our God. We never told you that. We never said we're going to play some music. We never said none of that. But all of a sudden, now you want to bow down to our God. You see, I, I just want to see how God works. Therefore, because of the king's, the king's commands was urgent. Hold on. Wait a minute. I'm in the wrong place. Wait, wrong place. No, 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 no. No, no. He says, and they have frustrated. Oh, let's go back to the top 28. Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants whom trusted in him. And they have frustrated the king's word. <laughs> they frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies. You see this? They gave up. And they, that that they should not serve nor worship any God except their own God. I don't understand how powerful these words are coming out of a, an unbeliever's mouth. Therefore, me, the man who yield the power, me, King Nebuchadnezzar, therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made an ash heap, because there is no other God who can deliver like this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in province of Babylon. Y'all see it. God's way is not our way. Faith. Got to have the faith of God. Have faith in who? Had a God kind of faith. Have faith in God. Understand that his word will not return unto him void. Understand God, God, God makes no mistakes. Understand that, look, look, you know a lot of people think God don't know. But see, he, God don't understand my situation. What are you talking about? God knows your situation better than you. God knows the outcome of your situation. But see, let me tell you, it depends on you. Whether you believe him, operate in faith, or you look at the fire and the fiery furnace. I'm going to tell you, it would have it made my heart leap when I saw those other men die. 
and we still living. They're putting us in a fiery furnace. I've seen the other men burn up from the heat, but we're still living. And I, and I feel no ailment at all. And we standing right here close to the fire. This is before they even throw them in. And I'm like, God, 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 God's doing something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It would have made me like, oh, boy, God is doing something. 